Welcome back to a new episode. And in this one, I'm gonna be talking about a car that I think is quite exciting. It's the new direction for Mercedes-Benz in their EV market. This is the EQXX. The EQXX has a specific purpose for Mercedes-Benz. It's a big challenge. They wanted to go for a car that on one single charge could achieve a thousand kilometers, roughly 620 miles. They have to design a car that cheats the wind. Mercedes-Benz has a unique history, I would say, of a trying to achieve a design that is as sleek as possible. You can see that these beautiful shapes, even today, look like they're pulled straight out of a science fiction movie. That's why I wanna look at it in terms of efficiency of design. And if it's a purely efficient design meant to be as slippery as possible, have they achieved it with this shape? So my first feeling, my first emotional feeling when I look at this car from that all important front three quarter view is I'm looking at something quite exciting to look at for the amount of simplicity that's required to produce a car that is pure aerodynamics. Now, this car has character. That's one of the things I'm noticing right away. Looks like nothing else I've ever seen before. Does it look like a Mercedes-Benz? Well, I'm not sure yet. I don't really care if it looks like a Mercedes-Benz. If you look back 100 years ago, does a Mercedes-Benz look like a Mercedes-Benz from 100 years ago? Definitely not. But enough advancement into the future to not really need to hold on to a Mercedes grill or too many identifying elements that hold it back into the current uh, space of time. So I can almost say that from the proportion point of view, it looks like a Mercedes-Benz. So I move to the side, I can see that kind of general feel of a very advanced, very concept-like Mercedes-Benz. But it's giving me the vibes of something that I would open up my checkbook and sign right away to want to own because this car is projecting us into the future, no holds barred. It looks like it's been hewn out of a solid billet of alloy. Beautiful, an absence of cut lines like I've never seen before. And I've seen the sketches, the original sketches of this automobile, and I can definitely see from the sketches why they chose this direction. They don't need lines on these cars to give them personality. They give the personality through what we would call surface entertainment. That's the nice sensual forms with things happening within the form dips, swells, muscles, tightening. What I find extremely interesting about this design of this car is it really harks back for me personally to the days, my university days back in the early mid eighties when I was studying at Art Center College of Design. And I had a few design gods in those days who I really looked up to, design students who were almost ready to graduate and were doing projects that really resembled this type of architecture, this type of design language. That's not saying that the EQXX looks like an idea born out of the 80s, but definitely back in the 80s, we were looking for what is the next big thing in car design. And already back then, we were starting to come up with shapes, like I said, that resembled this car. So those are my first emotional feelings, my first impressions of this car. Let's get into the front side and rear of the car so I can analyze what makes it so exciting for me. Now, as we start with that first all important front view of the car, this time I wanna look at it from the straight on approach because that way I can analyze a little bit more of the frontal surface area, what we call the cross-sectional area of the car. This is using a whole new frontal approach for the design of a Mercedes-Benz which is not bad because what they've done is constructed in such a way that down the road look that we have when it's coming towards you, you probably wouldn't recognize this as a Mercedes-Benz as we know it, but it does it for a purpose. It has a reason for it. We don't like air coming into the car from the front because it creates drag resistance. So we try to keep the front of the car as close as we can at higher speeds. 
And obviously Mercedes with this EQXX doesn't need as much air. It still needs air, but not as much as a car with a radiator and IC type propulsion. So what they're doing is taking air in underneath. You can see that through the bottom opening underneath the bumper. And then they're construing, constructing perhaps a type of language on top of it, which accentuates the Mercedes Trident shape. You can see it almost laser etched and fading out on the front area of the bumper just below the single bar of headlights that it has on the top. And those headlights there are also fairly new. I mean, we wouldn't see those today on a vehicle, but potentially in the next five, 10 years. And you have that beam that goes all the way across that position light beam, the white one at the very top, which accentuates the width of the car. So that works very well, gives it a very, very clean, very precise almost look to the car. What is a little bit unusual for me is to see a sticker placed as the badge. But again, a sticker is more aerodynamic than a 3D badge on the front with the Mercedes Trident there. Why is it shifted over to the side? I have zero idea. And then we can see, as I said before, that absence of lines separating the fender from the bonnet, from the hood really cleans up that front end very well. Probably the most important view when you look at a car is that front three quarter view. It looks absolutely clean, very nicely done. Not heavy at all, although I would imagine a car like this would naturally have pretty high weight penalty to it, being that it needs to carry around quite a large sized battery. But the big wheels on the car tend to disguise that, that mass, that volume that we see. And as I move to the side view, I'm really getting the feeling of something that does capitalize on the aerodynamics. In other words, this car visibly achieves that 0.17 CD drag ratio, which is as good as it gets today in today's car design world. So that is hugely respectable. When you look at it and realize that there are elements that could perhaps be even used to better effect. For example, the exterior mirrors on this car, they contribute to drag. We tend to want to minimize the size of side view mirrors. If they were perhaps electric, there were cameras that would reduce a little bit more, I would believe the wind resistance. As we move to the rear of the car where the air we want it to stick to the sides of the car. I perhaps see in a bit what Mercedes-Benz has done in the past. You could potentially cover partially the rear wheel to give it a much more sleeker side section, something where the air sticks much more uh, gently to the side of the vehicle. So perhaps something that would cover, not completely, but partially the top of the rear tire could benefit the CD ratio. Then again, what I appreciate from the side view now is the very short front overhang, but balanced in such a way that the long tail of it seems to have or exude that raindrop effect with a sort of a blunt front end, slowly tapering back to the rear and creating a, a rear that in aerodynamics, believe it or not, sometimes it's even better just to chop off the back of the car if you study cam tail design, what the chopped off rear end does on the corners is it gives it a clean cut to the air, creates less vortexes, less, less drag on the car itself. So Mercedes has done their homework. They know very well how to control the aerodynamics. And that's why you see this very precisely chopped off rear end. The chrome molding that surrounds the greenhouse line is exquisitely done, has that nice, almost same type of flowing direction that the rest of the volume of the car has. Very, very sleek, very dynamic looking C-pillar, very nicely leaning forward, giving it almost that pulling at the leash sort of dynamic stance that we like in car design. And as your eye moves down to the lower part where the sill or the rocker panel is, you can see that that connection point between the top of the sill panel, the rocker, and the body color is slightly angled. In other words, the back end is slightly higher than the front end, which does, like I said, make you feel like the car is pulling away. It's got this dynamic movement standing still. So that's a very, very nice touch to give this product, this car, a, a, a moving look, a, a, a dynamic stance, as we call it.
As you come to the back of the car, notice that absence of a, a break in the surface that would show you that the bumper is here. That's why it looks very solid and very liquidy almost, very flowing, very calm, but controlled and confident. Then you have that rear tail light that goes from one side up, over, and down to the other side. You would know this car when you were driving behind it at 50 yards at night. Still couldn't see the badge perhaps, but you would know this is a Mercedes Benz. Other items that I think could be improved on this car, the door handles on this car for me are a no-no because I would imagine that an aerodynamically optimized car would almost not have any visible door handles. Nothing to obstruct the wind gliding past the door. So if you're going to have a door handle, at least perhaps put it somewhere where it's either touch activated or perhaps voice activated or perhaps fob operated, but not something that you physically have to move. And I'm not sure if these door handles move, but I would not like to see door handles on this car simply because it would give it more of that hewn from a solid piece of metal look to it. Then the other piece of design that I would try to optimize on this car is the front door shut line which is almost straight up and down, almost vertical. And that, on a car that has so many curves and probably not a single straight line on it, that front straight door shut line kind of grinds against the philosophy of the rest of the design. It does remind me a little bit of the Porsche Taycan vent. And in that sense, if the car reminds you of another car, that's not good. And then as we come up and you have that sort of cam style rear end to it, that works very well. Perhaps it doesn't need to be as bulky as it looks because it's a lot of black surrounding the red internals on the tail lamp. Could probably be a little bit finer, a little bit finessed. In the rear itself, perhaps the panel between the lights on the rear, just above or just right about where you would put the number plate. It looks a little bit lifeless compared to the rest of the surfacing of this car, which is exquisitely done. Another thing that I would really address on improving on this car would be something that we see on just about every car today on the industry. And I still do not understand why we haven't moved away from it. The hard edge or semi hard edge on the wheel opening, just above the wheel opening, you'll see what we call the wheel lip. So it has a hard feature line that is typically explained by needing to stiffen the surface. We need to have that surface, that final edge of the surface, a little bit stiffer. So you add in that slight crease there in the surface metal. That antiquates the design. It makes it a little bit more older than it should look like. I feel that if it was perfected, you would give it more of an eroded look, an erosion type feel to it, where that edge that, that edge of the lip was actually a little bit softer, a little bit rounder, almost not perceivable. One other part of the design that disturbs me a bit is the rear shut line on the rear door. Now that line, as you see it coming down from the glass over the shoulder and then dies out as it comes into the wheel arch opening. I would have tried to find the minimal distance between where it comes down from the waistline to that wheel arch opening and minimize the actual length of that line so it becomes more inconsequential, less important, less strong, less dominant. And that I think would have cleaned it up quite a bit from the side view. So all in all, in conclusion, I think this car is extremely well executed as it should be under Gordon Wagner's design team, Mercedes-Benz, certainly has produced something here noteworthy in terms of future design direction, not just for Mercedes-Benz, but more manufacturers could do well by studying how they've approached it. Again, by using nature as an influence, the laws of aerodynamics have come into play on the design. Those laws will always remain as a guiding design principle because we're talking about mobile objects that have to push into the resistance of wind and Mercedes-Benz, again, have done it in a formidable way, I would say, producing a car that, while being almost soft in one respect, has included enough tension, enough solidity, enough surface entertainment to make this car very exciting for me from a designer's point of view. Whew. This car is 
beautiful, it's innovative, it's pushing the limits of design. A lot of solutions that you have not seen today, and that could represent a future design direction for not just electric vehicles, but any other type of vehicle, be it nuclear powered, hydrogen powered, whatever. But I think it's a great direction for Mercedes-Benz, very professional, very exquisitely handled in terms of proportions, surface, and balance. So this car for me, I would give it a rating of fairly high. I would say 9.3, because there are a few elements that I would look at improving on this car to make it even more aerodynamic. Amazing that they've reached 0.17. I think it could even be better than that. As always, let me know in the comments below what you think of this car. Is it exciting? Is it boring? Is it not far enough into the future for an EV type car from Mercedes-Benz? Comments below, please. I read all of them and I really welcome that diversity of opinion that you all seem to have. Every episode, it gets funner to read them. See you in the next episode. And breaking news, I am now on Twitter under Frank Stephenson Design. If you want to suggest videos, submit critiques, in general, stay in touch with me and follow some very, very exciting things that are going to be coming out very soon, namely NFT stuff. Be sure to sign up and I'll see you over there too.